Hello. Welcome back to Snap Revisors. If, if this is the second time that you have come to watch one of our webinars. Um, today, I'm going to be going through some photosynthesis stuff. And traditionally, this is something that I've considered to be one of the hardest parts of A-level biology. Um, this is the reason why I wanted to do it in the first few weeks, just so as many of you as possible can try and see this because genuinely people struggle with it. But hopefully, uh, with some of the tips that I've got, hopefully some of that's going to start to make a little bit more sense. Okay, so I'm going to open up my PowerPoint. Um, hopefully you guys will be, uh, will be able to see what my screen is showing. Let's give it a go. Ah, yes, perfect. You can see stuff, right. Um, what we're going to be doing today then is we are going to be doing a bit of an overview of photosynthesis first. So I think it's really important just before we do anything else, we just sort of remember what photosynthesis is from GCSE, um, kind of the, the equation, a, a few basics, and then we'll move on to some of the more a level -y stuff. Uh, I'm hoping for the majority of you people who are here today are in year 13 at the moment. I had a student a few years ago in year 12 who tried to study photosynthesis and he got really, really confused basically cried a little bit and I just don't want that to happen just yet. So if you are a year 12 and you want to see what it's like, feel free to stick around, but I think it will be quite hard. Maybe you can show off a bit to your teacher though, I don't know. Um, I'm seeing that we've got some comments coming up as well. Yes, uh, thick ham, loving the enthusiasm so far. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that you're happy that I'm the person who's back doing this session. Hopefully it's going to be not too tricky. Okay, so just to remind you if you weren't here last time or just to introduce myself if you were here last time, uh, other way around. Um, my name is Ollie Vaughan. So I am the head of biology here at Snap Revise. Um, in terms of like my background with everything, uh, I've been a teacher for the last few years. I've recently moved to Snap Revise. Um, I've taught quite a lot of A-level. So I've taught A-level for about four years now. So I've gone through enough students that I know quite a lot of the pitfalls. Um, and yeah, I did my degree a few years back, probably about five or six years ago now at Southampton, where I did just biology and I really, really loved all of the stuff to do with photosynthesis. I know lots of people possibly don't, but I'm strange and I really enjoyed it when I did it myself. OK, um, just in case you want a little bit more information, in case you, this is your first session with Snap Revise, um, basically the idea of these uh, web classes is to firstly sort of recap the main points that you've been doing in school. So I'm hoping with the majority of you, you will have seen some of this stuff before. It won't be brand new and we're just sort of going over it. Luckily, because this is on YouTube, you can watch it again and again and again um, until you finally understand photosynthesis to the level that you need it. Um, I'm going to go over the key points. Um, I'm going to go over some exam questions. Uh, with the exam stuff today, it's actually quite tricky to find exam questions that relate perfectly to uh, the light dependent stage of photosynthesis. So I'm going to go over some mathsy things because I think that's something quite a lot of people struggle with. So I'd suggest if you have one that you get your calculators out and maybe a little sheet of paper just so you can have a go at doing some questions. Um, I hate to sound like a teacher, but I think it's quite important that you can do these. Uh, finally, these sessions are here so you can ask some questions. OK, uh, just so you know, these sessions are totally free at the moment. They won't be forever, though. So after about four weeks, um, these sessions are going to have to be uh, something that you have to pay for which I'll talk more about in a bit, but for now you have me for free. Um, just so you know what's going on, uh, we actually have a, a, a giveaway um, in today's session. So I've got a coupon at the very end. So if you stick around till the end, you'll be able to get one of our coupons. Um, you'll also be in with a chance to get a free account if you can post a picture onto your Instagram um, basically saying that you have gone to a webinar. If you tag us at Snap Revise, um, one very lucky person will basically get picked out at random. That person will be given Snap Revise 2.0 for free. Okay, so hopefully that's going to be really good. Um, literally just did photosynthesis today, Steph. Okay, let's hope that this makes sense. I remember Logan, who's just said my teacher has confused me on the topic. I felt that same way. I remember I did this at the very end of year 12 because we had a few weeks left. My teacher rushed through it and I basically had no idea. Um, person talking about cyclic photophosphorylation. 
you'll see where I'm going to, I'll get to something a bit about that in a second, but I'm not going to actually spend too long on it. I will briefly mention it again. Um, okay. So what I would like you to do, yeah, FitCam, if you are getting confused, because I said cyclic photophosphorylation, I'm sure you're not the only one. Maybe that wasn't what you were upset about. Um, what I want to do to start off, and I've said this uh, in my last session, is I like to see what people already know in terms of this subject. So I don't think it's worth me going in assuming you know nothing. So I want to see what you know. So have a look at this pyramid, which I have just posted. Um, it has questions that start at the bottom, which start off easy, and they get a little bit harder as you go up. Okay, so have a look at some of these questions. If you'd like to post some answers on the comment section, I'll keep my eyes on it, see what you can do. So the first question is just asking you, what is photosynthesis? So I want to see, um, I want to see some people answering, what is photosynthesis? It's a bit of a weird question, isn't it? What is photosynthesis? Uh, let's see if anyone is saying anything. <laughs> At the moment, no, just someone asking me how long this will be. It will be about an hour. Anyone want to comment? We had some lovely people the other day who were commenting on this, getting all these questions right. Yes, Steph, Steph, you are a saint. So Steph has said, turning light energy into glucose. Interesting. So you are doing something to form glucose. Glucose being this really important sugar, which I spoke about the other day, Lovely um, process of how plants get energy using light to transfer. So how plants get energy. Okay, that's interesting. Thick ham. I would say the process of how plants get energy is probably more respiration. Um, someone, Logan, you've said water and carbon dioxide makes oxygen and glucose. I like, Logan, that you are being a scientist and you are basically not bothering to answer it in any more detail than just an equation. I like that. Uh, Fasma making ACP and glucose. Ooh what I'm saying, ACP, and oxygen, and NADP from light, water, and carbon dioxide. Lovely. Converting light energy to chemical energy. Um, how plants make their food. <laughs> You're welcome, Logan. Uh, lovely, yeah. So what is photosynthesis? I think, put basically, it's just a way of a plant making itself some food, right? It's a way of a plant making itself some glucose. You guys know that plants don't roam around hunting, eating. They have to make their own food, okay? That is what is going on. Um, word equation for photosynthesis. Logan's said phylacoid and stroma. Love it. Um, so what is a word equation? Someone said this. Watch out for this. So if it's asking for a word equation, it is not asking for symbols. It is not asking for H2O. It is not asking for CO2. It is not asking for C6H12O6. It is asking you for the words. So you all probably know this, but it's something to watch out for. Okay, so H2O being water. So it's water plus carbon dioxide makes glucose and oxygen. Okay, that is the word equation that I'm looking for. FASMA has absolutely nailed it. Okay, um, this process, you might see it on the little sort of arrow which is drawn, which means sort of reactants making products. You quite often see the word light energy or light. That's because it needs um, the sun. It needs some form of energy to get this done. Um, I'm not gonna bother talking about the symbol equation. Loads of you have already said this. Um, you know it's carbon dioxide. In fact, no, I will do it because some people actually didn't say what the numbers were. So in terms of what it is, it's CO2 plus H2O makes C6H12O6, and I can't fit it in, what a mistake, plus O2. Okay, in terms of the numbers, you need to make sure that you have got these sixes in. So there's a six before carbon dioxide, six before H2O, six before O2. Okay, don't worry about balancing it. You don't ever really need to balance an equation in biology, but just remember six, 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 the number of the beast. Okay, lovely, fit can knows what I'm on about. Um, okay, getting tougher then. This was at GCSE, but lots of my students forgot this. So what happens to the products of photosynthesis? What happens to the products of photosynthesis. Okay, so ATP has adenine, ribose sugar, and two phosphate groups. Um, ATP, triose phosphate, actually has three phosphate groups. Um, the energy is converted into glucose, okay? So let's say we've got this molecule here. I've got my uh, glucose, I've got my oxygen. What happens to this glucose? What happens to the oxygen? Thick ham, used for respiration, lovely. So this is respired. Okay, it might not last for very long, it will get respired. The majority of it is going to get turned into uh, starch, which I spoke about the other day. It gets turned into starch, could be turned into cellulose. 
Does anyone know the term that we use for all of these molecules, uh, all of these sort of biological molecules? I could write a few more down, like I could write lipids down. Um, I could write uh, proteins down with a little help from nitrates. Um, what is the word for all of these things? Does anyone know? Organic, true, organic is true, not the word I'm looking for. Monosaccharides, good guess. If it's a lipid, it's definitely not a saccharide. Word I'm thinking of, I don't want to say actually, I don't want to fish for your answer. I want to see if anyone can organically come up with this. Do you see what I did there? Uh, macromolecules, love it, Stacey, not what I'm going for though. Metabolic, uh, metabolic just means reactions. Uh, it's a word beginning with B. Word beginning with B. You probably saw it at um, GCC, but you might not have thought about it very much. Amino acids, that's what proteins are made from. Organic compounds, B. Beta glucose, good guess. Give you another letter, I. Biological, close, O. Second letter, <laughs> biological molecules, not quite. M. Come on, someone's got to get there. Who's going to get there first? Oh, I don't want to say any more letters. Bioma, something. Come on. Who's going to be? Yes, Rahul, legend, biomass. So most, or not most, a lot of this glucose is turned into biomass. So why I'm still products of photosynthesis, lots of, a lot of it is uh, respired, some of it is turned into biomass. Lovely. Um, describe the organelle where photosynthesis takes place. Um, I'm probably not too bothered by describe. I'm more interested in if you can name it. Where does it happen? Is anyone going to have any ideas about where this happens? Photosynthesis takes place in chloroplasts, which contain chlorophyll. Lovely. Uh, Rebecca, you are spot on as is 1000 subs no videos um the organelle which happens in is chloroplast that is basically what all you got to talk about photosynthesis really apart from maybe a few little reactions that went on uh, the thylakoid membrane edward yes you are more in the right place uh deca photosystems correct finally what is the structure and function of atp this is not gcse hopefully you are a year 12 hopefully sorry year 12 hopefully you're a year 13 and you did this in year 12 what is atp made of what does it look like um, what things, what does it actually do? Who knows what uh, ATP is? Any takers? Energy, yes. Sugar molecule-ish. Adenine, yes. Free phosphates and sugar, yes. Adenine triphosphate, lovely. Currency, I remember learning that. Um, cool, Molly Brown, love it. I actually had a student called Molly Brown a few years ago. Um, it is adenine, it is a ribose sugar, and it is free phosphate molecules. So you've got... Um, Let's draw my free phosphates first. I tend to draw this as a bit of a mirror of how the book's centered, right? So you have your free little phosphate molecules. That is attached to a ribose sugar. Ribose has five sides, five carbons. That is attached to an inorganic base, which is adenine or adenine, however you want to pronounce it, okay? That's what trios, uh, sorry, that's what ATP looks like. Essentially, you can split off one of these phosphates. What is the... Um, what's the process? What's the name for that reaction where you break a bond in biology and you break one of those phosphate groups? Does anyone know what it's called? Hydrolysis, muy bien. So hydrolysis is when you break off one of these phosphate groups that releases a small amount of energy. Whoever is saying uh, lysis, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, be careful. If you're ever talking about this in an exam, you have to say hydrolysis. Okay, when you break down ATP, you are going to use up some water and you then break it down. Right. I reckon that'll do from G to C in year 12 recap. Let's get into the bulk of this. So my objectives for you by the end of today is I want you to understand the basics of photosynthesis. That is somewhat about what I've just spoken about. I'm going to talk a little bit about pigments. Hopefully we'll have an idea of them. However, I'm not going to talk about really much more than just chlorophyll. I'll mention briefly something called xanthophyll and carotene, but not really too much more. Um, I'll talk about how ATP is produced. That's probably the second most important part of this session, I'd say, how ATP is produced. And then uh, finally, we're going to look at how NADPH is produced. Uh, just so you know, uh, NADPH is a bit of a lazy way of saying reduced uh, NADP. Okay, it's a bit of a lazy way of saying that. And I probably wouldn't get in the habit, if I were you, of writing NADPH. I would always write reduced NADP. And then in brackets, after you've said it, I would call it NADPH. Okay, you're allowed to do that in an exam. 
if you refer to something properly and then give it an acronym, that's absolutely fine. And your examiners have to credit it, but you have to say it first. Okay? So uh, try to get in the habit of saying reduced NADP and then putting it in brackets after. Okay, one other thing I'm not gonna cover is, I'm really sorry to whoever spoke about this earlier about cyclic photo or phosphorylation. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it too much apart from the negatives of it, but because some boards don't cover it, I'm not gonna talk too much. Um, Let's have a look. Tommy Shelby is getting confused, I reckon. Uh, DCPIP, Olga, you have hopefully just done a practical where you use DCPIP instead of NADP. Um, it is complicated. I hope you understand that. I'm going to do a session on that at some point. Um, what is ATP used for again? Sorry, FitCam. I love your name. Um, ATP is used to release a little bit of energy. Basically, if you ever did an experiment at school called the Screaming Jelly Baby, which is where you put a little bit of sugar or a jelly baby into a oxidizing agent, it basically blows up. That's not good. You don't want to blow up. ATP releases a little bit of energy so that you can use it efficiently. Um, person talking about FADH, NADH. Yes, that person is also correct if they're talking about respiration. Okay, so uh, some specification points, guys. I'm not going to bother going through this too much. It is here for you. If you watch my colleague who did one of these sessions the other day, uh, on chemistry, she would have said that whenever you are studying, which I'm hoping, and uh, again, I'm going to feel like your mum at the moment, if I just said your mum, how embarrassing. Um, basically, you should be reading this. If you are revising for something, you should be reading this, okay? So make sure you are looking at it. Um, find your uh, specification, have a look through it, and basically match up your knowledge to it, okay? It's a bit vague, but it'll hopefully help. Okay, um, right, starting off then, photosynthesis basics. Uh, the first thing which I think we need to talk about is we need to be able to say that photosynthesis is vital for the formation of biomass. So that word there, which will come back again and again and again, um, photosynthesis is there to produce biomass for a plant, whether that's cellulose, whether that's starch, whatever, right? Plants need biomass because they don't eat things. It converts carbon dioxide gas into glucose. Um, I've already written this down, but I'll write it again very quickly. The symbol equation, not word equation, is CO2 plus H2O. You guys will know this because that's what plants need to survive. Uh, that makes C6H12O6 plus oxygen, which we use to breathe, which is quite helpful. Okay, to balance it, we just need our sixes. Okay, as I said, sometimes it will say light above this arrow. That is just trying to indicate to you that this process basically is slightly catalyzed, well not slightly, entirely catalyzed by light. Without light, it doesn't work. Okay, um, chlorophyll, in case you haven't come across this, chlorophyll is what makes plants green. Okay, chlorophyll is this little pigment, which is inside of a plant, it is inside of something called a photosystem, and it is green. Okay, so chlorophyll is just a green pigment. Okay, everyone looking okay with this so far? Uh, bu -bu 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 will this be live uh, yeah this will be uploaded at the end so you'll be able to get to this how is biomass formation used by plant growth so if you want to grow as a plant you need some biomass so um you sort of forget that plants have protein in unless you're a vegetarian and you've lived a life without some meat uh, you probably forget that plants have a whole load of protein in right every enzyme in any organism is protein based so if you want any protein, you need some biomass first. You need, well, you need some glucose first and you turn that into protein. Biomass is just a collective word for carbohydrates, lipids, fats, proteins, whatever. Um, let's have a look. Chloroplast is an organelle found in plants which have thylakoids and granite as well as chlorophyll to absorb. Lovely. Um, how can you download it at the end, please? I don't know if you'll be able to download it if it's on YouTube, but you'll be able to watch it whenever you want to. Um, one last thing I want to talk about. Uh, hopefully, when you were in year 12, you saw this little diagram down here, right? And you probably thought, nah, nah, I don't need to know that. that that's really complicated. I'm going to skip this and I'll just assume I know. Right. That's where you're wrong. So you actually need to know this diagram off by heart. And I've seen numerous exam questions covering this. So in case you're not totally aware, um, this whole structure is a chloroplast. This is what a chloroplast looks like. If you were to sort of cut it in half, which is what this image is showing you, this is what it looks like, okay? So you have, uh, firstly, the, the first thing you'll notice is it's got these weird two membranes, right? Not many things have two membranes and it has this weird evolutionary story, which basically a little organelle like this was happily floating along, little chloroplast, 
And then another thing came and basically gobbled it up and engulfed it. And you end up with this thing with two membranes. Here's one membrane, here's the other. That's why chloroplasts have two membranes. That's a bit of an A-level thing, but it's interesting. Um, you've got these two membranes, okay? You've got an inner membrane, which makes sense. You have an outer membrane, okay? This inner membrane also forms these weird structures inside. So these weird structures inside, these are connected to the inner membrane, okay? And they have uh, kind of two words for them, which you'll need to remember. So one single little disc. So say that little disc, I've just put a little dot in or a few dots in that one there. That is called a thylakoid. Okay, that is called a thylakoid. Okay, essentially, these guys stack up on top of each other. And when they do that, they are referred to as granum. Okay, so, or hang on, singular, it is granum. Plural, it is grana. Okay, so these little thylakoids stack up on top of one another and they form these things called grana, that's the plural, or singular granum. Okay, this is where photosynthesis actually happens. Okay, so photosynthesis of a light dependent stage of it actually happens on these little green guys down here. Okay, the only other thing to know is that you also have something called the stroma. The stroma is very, very similar to the cytoplasm of a cell. The only difference is it has a few little uh, enzymes in there that you wouldn't normally find elsewhere. Um, so if you've done any other uh, plant stuff at school, uh, you might have heard of something called Rubisco. Okay, Rubisco is the most abundant enzyme on the entire planet. It is found in absolute like bucket loads in the stroma. Okay, so there are different points, uh, sorry, different parts. I recommend that you learn this. I recommend that you have a picture of this in your mind so that when we talk about it, it'll make sense. Uh, let's have a look at some comments quickly just to check that everyone is so far cool with this. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Is that just a plant cell? It's not a plant cell, that is an organelle, that is the chloroplast. Um, someone corrected that, thank you for that person. Uh, do we need to know about the lamellae? Uh, good point. So these little structures connecting the uh, phylicoids, they are sometimes referred to as lamella or lamellae, again, plural or singular. Um, you don't really need to know about them. They used to be a big deal back when I was doing my A-levels, but I haven't seen it come up recently. But those little bits that join them together, they're called lamellae. Uh, Rubisco does fix carbon. Um, you are right. Uh, da -da -da. Anyone else looking for anything? Someone's asking, Daisy O'Donnell, you're asking a question, which I'll get to in a second. Um, Lol, I've been chilling all year. No notes, no nothing. Oh dear, seek justice. I think you need to start doing some work. Mm. Uh, anyway, let's have a look then. So that's one basic, photosynthesis, little symbol equation, hopefully no chlorophyll is, and that is a chloroplast, okay? Uh, one other thing which I think is re really useful to know is it'd be useful for you guys to know that there are a few different pigments. And I said I'd briefly mention this, here they all are. So there's chlorophyll A and B, which are the two big boys of this story. They're one's gonna focus on. There is one called xanthophyll, uh, which is blue. There's another one called carotene, which is what gives carrots their colors. Um, and there are some other weird bacterial ones. Don't worry too much about this. Um, can anyone guess why organisms have more than one pigment? So pigments are these things, uh, these, these things in the chloroplast that collect the light and they turn it into some form of uh, sugar. Can anyone tell me why it might be useful to have more than one of these? Do you need to know this? Yes, you need to have some idea of this. Uh, lovely. Logan, you are spot on. So the reason that we have more than one of these pigments is basically to maximise the amount of photosynthesis we can do. Okay, These different wavelengths down at the bottom, um, loads of you are saying lots of good things here. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Um, these different wavelengths are what you naturally get in white light. So the more pigments you have, the more photosynthesis you can do. So this is just maximising um, the amount of light that can be used. So maximizing the amount of light, or I guess you could word that a bit better and say maximizing the wavelengths available to plants. Amount of light available. Okay. Um, and in terms of what a photosystem is, photosystems are really quite basic things. They kind of look like little cones. So they kind of look something a bit like that. Okay. Your pigment sits right at the bottom down here. Okay, so it kind of looks like an upside down volcano. So this is say my chlorophyll and my photosystem is just a means to funnel my light in. Okay, so my little wavelength of light is gonna come in, bounce off the side, 
bounce down here and then hit my chloroplast, okay? So a photosystem is just a complex that you get in your plant that helps to funnel light in the way you want to go. Okay, I'm not gonna talk too much more about light and pigments. Um, final two things I want to briefly mention uh, let's see, everyone's okay with this. I think we're okay with this. Um, it's just a little bit of uh, vocab. So looking back at ATP again, um, let's make sure we know this. So I've seen it referred to as an energy currency, okay? Uh, with A-level biology, try not to get too carried away at just learning simple definitions like that. So I remember when I was at school, and you might have seen memes on like the internet where people say they went to school and they learned nothing but the mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell. I'm sure loads of you will be familiar with that. That gets you literally no marks ever in A-level. So ATP is an energy currency. Um, essentially what happens is ATP will break down or it'll be hydrolyzed, much better word, into ADP. So adenose triphosphate is broken down into adenose diphosphate plus something called inorganic phosphate. So PI by its symbols, inorganic phosphate, okay? So ATP is broken down into those two things, releasing a small amount of energy. Okay, it's really important that you don't say sentences like making energy. Like if you've ever had a physics teacher and you've said that, I'm sure they would have chastised you and basically said, you can't make energy, you can't destroy it. Um, it it's important, you can't make it, you just release a small amount of energy. Okay, um, something we haven't come across yet, is NADPH, okay? There is a similar one, which is used in respiration, which is NAD, okay? I always remember that this little P here tells me it's photosynthesis. I actually don't remember what this stands for, um, but the P is how I've always remembered photosynthesis, okay? Um, let's have a look. Anyone looking at all confused? Do we need to know any more about photosystems? No, don't worry about photosystems anymore. Uh, it can be you, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure most of you on content for AQA. Any tips apart from mock tests? Uh, yeah, keep doing them. Maybe sign up to a useful website. There's a really good one, which I've heard called Snap Revise, which you should have a look at. Um, ADP, sorry, ADP, this thing here is just the same as ATP. So you've got your three phosphate molecules. You've got, oh, you've got your ribose sugar, which looks something like that. And then you've got an inorganic phosphate um, sorry, a, you've got an inorganic base, which is adenine. Um, basically, ADP is that exact thing minus one of these. One of these phosphate groups has been hydrolyzed, which releases a bit of energy. Okay, so how are we looking? Um, what is ADP? Hydrolyzed ATP, lovely. Why is a phosphate called PI? It's an inorganic phosphate. Um, I don't know why they decide to call it inorganic. I don't really see why that matters, but the PI literally just means one of these little phosphate guys has just split off, okay? These guys tend to snap back again quite frequently. They're constantly being broken down and made. You don't really have a whole lot of this stuff in your body. Um, okay, so NADP, just so we know, NADP is referred to as a coenzyme. Okay, that is a phrase that you are gonna come across a few times in this topic. A coenzyme um, is not an enzyme, confusingly. A coenzyme is basically something that helps enzymes to work. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't have any like enzymatic properties. It just helps them to work. Okay, in NAD's, uh, NADP's case, it basically goes around um, giving some hydrogen to things, taking hydrogen off of things, and therefore oxidizing and reduces them. So NADP is used to oxidize and reduce various different molecules. It's really, really important. Okay, so it is uh, a coenzyme. It acts as a electron. I'm gonna talk about oxidation and reduction again in a second. It acts as an electron and a proton. And by proton, I mean hydrogen ion carrier. Okay, it basically carries electrons and protons from one place uh, to another. Okay, sometimes you will see it referred to as reduced. N-A-D-P, okay? This is the one which I think it's more important you remember. As opposed to calling it N-A-D-P-H, I would try and remember reduced N-A-D-P and then just put it in brackets after, okay? I don't wanna see people taking marks off of you for something as silly as that. And I've seen it happen before. Um, 
it's irritating. Okay, so just refer to it as reduced in ADP. Oh, and then put it in brackets at the end. I forgot the H. There you go. Um, aren't they always just reduced? No. So this is oxidized all the time as well. Um, I learned it was like three little boys squashed onto a double bus seat. One gets pushed off, release energy, then it gets back on again. Yeah, Louise, I think that's a really good little analogy to help think about this. Okay. Um, final thing, the thylakoid membrane, what is that thing? That is just the place where the light dependent reaction happens. So the site of the light, sorry, not independent, the light dependent reaction. Okay, really simply, um, because it's light dependent, it means it requires the light to work. Okay, um, right, one last little thing, and then I'm gonna start properly getting into this. In case you are unfamiliar, in case you haven't done chemistry going into your uh, A-levels, it's really, really important that you understand what oxidation is and what reduction is. Okay, the way I was always sorted, does anyone know this? Does anyone know the way to remember oxidation and reduction? I wanna see some comments. I wanna see someone tell me how you remember this. Lovely, Kate. So oxidation, I've always remembered it as oil rig. Lovely, um, thick ham, lovely Fatima, lovely, oh, Christ, you're going crazy for it. Love it. Um, oil rig is how I've always remembered this, okay? Oil rig stands for oxidation is the loss of electrons, okay? So it's the loss, I'm gonna write this up here, of electrons, okay? Conversely, reduction, I'm gonna write red, reduction is the gain of electrons, okay? But there are some other weird things as well. And in biology, we don't talk too much about the electrons, you'll be pleased to know, that's more of a chemist sort of area. Um, in terms of reduction, you guys need to know it is the gain, and I'm going to write this in shorthand, the gain of electrons, E minus. But there's also a few other things. Does anyone know what this is? Yes, 1,000 subs, no videos, smashing it. Um, reduction is also the gain of hydrogen. Okay, this tends not to be hydrogen ions. This tends to be full-blown hydrogen. Okay, so the gain of electrons, gain of hydrogen, or one other thing, uh, oh no, one person has made a mistake. Um, reduction is definitely, oh, hang on. Have I gone and said this the wrong way around? Reduction is the gain. No, I haven't said it wrong way around. Sorry, I just, in my head, that switch for a second, that was confusing. Um, sorry, the only other thing that it is as well, reduction is the loss of oxygen. Okay, so is it loss of oxygen? The opposite is true for oxidation. So if oxidation, it is the loss of electrons. Um, it is the loss of hydrogen. And it finally is the gain of oxygen. That's where the name comes from. Um, okay, so oxidation is the gain of oxygen. Okay, which one gives off energy? I love that someone has just called me sir. That is the funniest thing I've seen for a while. My name's Ollie. If you want to call me Ollie, that's absolutely fine. Or if you want to call me sir, be my guest. I can, I can go for either of them. Um, which one gives off energy? I wouldn't really say either of them particularly gives off energy. I would say lots of processes that involve oxidation reduction can give off energy, but lots of them can also take in energy, right? Depending on if it's exothermic or endothermic, but I'm not really going to get into that right now. Okay, right, so I want to see how you are feeling. And when I did this the other day, I got everyone to post me some numbers. But then I saw that you guys did a similar thing uh, with my colleague the other day with Georgia, and you all started posting emojis. And I felt really gutted that I only got stupid numbers. So could you show me how you are feeling? If you use an emoji, you are gonna make me slightly happy. Okay, show me an emoji, show me how you are feeling. Are you going to do all the topics in bio or just a few? I'm planning on doing all of the topics in biology over the next couple of years. Excellent. Easy peasy. One. Lovely. Can anyone do a better emoji than that? Uh, nice. Sick. <laughs> lovely. Angelic. Love it. Lovely because I'm funny. Ugh, don't tell me that. It only encourages me. Um, yeah, nice. Shades. Perfect. Okay. Right. Prove it. Prove that you find this easy. Here are some questions, or here are, uh, is one question with three parts. See if you can remember this. I took this from a year 12 sort of AS level paper. See if you can remember the different parts then. 
feel free to type them in. Photosynthesis is endothermic dot 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 question mark. Um, photosynthesis basically has to use energy. So yes, it is endothermic. Lovely. A is, um, lots of people saying it, A is the inner membrane. Spot on. Well done. So that's the inner membrane. Okay. B, are people saying this? What is B? B is the... Streamer. Yes, Logan. Yes, Decker. Decker. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, yeah. B is the streamer. So it's like the cytoplasm, I just said. Um, and then finally, C. Someone said that. Uh, it is a single granum, okay? If you said it was a thylakoid, you might possibly be able to scrape a mark. You know, if you've seen an exam question, it says like, accept this, and you feel like, oh, okay, fine, I'll have to accept it. Um, yeah, granum is good. Okay, cool. So moving on then. This is where it starts to get a little bit tricky, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you all of it first, and then we're gonna break it down into little manageable bite-sized snap revised kind of bits. Okay, so this diagram here, that mess of stuff going on there, that is the light dependent stage of photosynthesis. Hopefully you have that on your screens now. Okay, it should look a little bit complicated. Yes, you should have that on your screens. Okay, so what the hell is that? <laughs> That's, a, I think that's the most important thing to think about when you see this. What the hell is going on? So I've got a little membrane here. Hopefully you guys have done phospholipid bilayers at some point. You can see some lipids um, over here, phospholipids. Um, I think the first place to start with this is just working out what the different spaces are. So I've got the stroma down here on the bottom. So that is like the cytoplasm inside the chloroplast. And then up here, I've got the thylakoid space. You might see that referred to as the inner membrane space. Okay, so you've got the stroma at the bottom and then the thylakoid space at the top. Okay, so there are some processes that are going to go on in this pro uh, over, over the series of the next few minutes. There are some processes that go on. And I think the way that I'd like to start talking about this is by not talking about this thing, which is photolysis, which I'm sure someone would be able to define for me. Um, but I want to talk about something called photoionization. Okay, can anyone guess what photoionization is about? Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, it can be called the lumen as well, Emma. That is also another word um, for the inner membrane. The lumen, inner membrane, same thing. Um, do do do. Because one thousand subs, you don't make reduced NADP, and that's the most important bit. Um, photoionization is definitely not the breaking down of water. Um, light uses to ionize something, correct? Chlorophyll uses to electrons, correct? Um, when the electrons are released after photolysis, not ionizing water, not splitting water, use of sunlight to remove electrons, lovely. Right, just in case you see this written down in a textbook or a teacher showing you this in a different way, this little guy here, this is a photosystem, okay? And this one tends to be referred to as PS2, okay? Photosystem two. Photoionization. Photoionization means the ionizing, and in case you've forgotten what that means, ionizing is just when electrons are basically lost from atoms. Ionization, photoionization, sorry, is when this chlorophyll, which sits somewhere down here, so chlorophyll, and it's chlorophyll B in this case, but again, don't worry too much, um, chlorophyll gets ionized. So a photon of light will come and hit chlorophyll, and that causes some electrons to basically become excited. They go absolutely crazy for a few seconds. Okay, so I get some electrons that get basically struck off of my chlorophyll and they suddenly are full of beans and they will basically do everything that they can to no longer be as excited as they are. So these electrons are taken off of my chlorophyll and they will move along something called the... Uh, how I write it here, the electron transport chain, which is commonly called the ETC for short. Okay, so all of these electrons, so a little bit of light, I'll, I'll start again just in case you missed that. A little bit of light will hit my chlorophyll. Electrons go crazy, they absolutely lose their minds. Okay, they start moving about and they will start to move down a series of protons. 
uh, sorry, proteins, which are found in this membrane, which you don't need to know the names of. If you go to university and do this, you do need to know the names of it. And you possibly have heard of something called cytochrome and it's one of them. Um, don't worry for now. But these electrons will move down these little protons, proteins, ugh, and they'll go, here's another one here, this is another protein. And they'll keep moving along these little proteins. And every time they move, they lose a little bit of energy. So they get really excited. Then they slightly start to lose their energy as they move down this chain of proteins, this electron transport chain. Okay, these electrons ultimately end up sort of just floating around a little bit in the stroma. Okay, the stroma is where the second stage of photosynthesis happens. It's where you want to be. It's like the cool kids party if you are like going to some 18 like birthday parties and stuff, right? It's where you want to be. So they're trying to get to the stroma. So they get excited, go away for a bit. They go down these proteins, the electron transport chain, and they ultimately end up in the stroma where they are going to be used in a bit. Let's have a look. Um, is everyone kind of getting an idea of that? Uh, yes, lovely. Someone has just reminded me. This is a redox reaction. Okay, so as soon as you lose an electron, what did we say? What process was that? If you lose an electron, what is that? Let's see if someone can tell me. Ooh, I want to see someone say it. Yes, Basma, spot on. So chlorophyll has become oxidized. Chlorophyll is very quickly oxidized. Okay, my first protein up here is going to gain an electron. What happens to that electron? It's obvious, actually. I'm not going to wait for you to say it. It's reduction. I'm sure someone's going to say it. Just as I say that. Oh, someone's saying the other thing. I'm not going to wait. So um, these electrons, thank you. <laughs> these electrons are going to go into this protein and they're going to reduce it. Those electrons are then going to leave that protein and oxidize it and go into another protein and oxidize it. So the electron transport chain has a whole load of redox reactions happening through it. Okay, so photoionization. Photo if, I, if I had an exam question on this, step one, I would say um, that light or a photon of light strikes a chlorophyll molecule. It causes an electron to become excited, which will, uh, oxidation is lost it will cause that chlorophyll to be oxidized. Then that electron will go down the electron transport chain, reducing and oxidizing everything in its path. Okay. Um, these electrons will shift down to the stroma. Okay. Um, there is something else which is also happening at this point. Okay, so there is something else which is happening. I've said down here, if you have a look, I don't know if you can see this. I've said in the stroma, there is a low concentration of hydrogen ions. So there's a low concentration of um, little protons, okay? These little protons, if I draw a couple, here are a few nice, happy little protons. Um, these protons, if they are sat close enough to this, and you don't need to know the name of this protein, if they are sat close enough to the membrane, as those electrons go down, as they lose their energy, that energy, you probably did elect uh, electron transfers when you were at GCSE, when you spoke about kinetic energy going into whatever energy, like gravitational potential. Um, that energy is transferred to these hydrogen uh, ions and they get pumped through. So they will literally get pumped through this little protein. And that process has a name. It's called secondary active transport. Okay, you don't need to know that either. It's just another thing. These little hydrogen ions will be pumped through and you'll get a few hydrogen ions just stacking up at the top. Okay, that becomes really important in a bit. Okay, so I've, I've managed to move some electrons and, <laughs> and I've also pumped some hydrogens. I've lost someone, I think thick ham. Um, all you need to know for now is electrons are being excited. They're moving down this chain of proteins called the electron transport chain. And then a little bit of that energy. So oh, what's a good way of imagining it? Imagine that... Um, you were basically walking along different houses, right? And you have to pop into a house and then to a next one and then to a the next time uh, and next one. But every time you pop in, you have to give a quid to whoever owns the house, right? Basically, all of that money that ends up inside of that house is used by this other thing, this proton, to basically launch its way through it. So these little houses will have a build up of money and then these other little protons can go through it. I don't know if that clears it up a little bit. Yes, they are guessing pumped. Uh, do the H ions form water at the end? I'll get to that in a second. Um, I, actually, no, I won't. I'll tell you now. I'll spoil it. No, they don't. They do something else instead. 
can't believe this is actually making sense finally. Olga, I have this added advantage, but hopefully you've heard this a little bit before. Um, you can access this video after as well. Right, so a few hydrogens have popped out over here. Lovely, they're just gonna settle there for a bit. Okay, that is photoionization. The problem with this process, problem with this process is chlorophyll doesn't have unlimited electrons, right? Let's say I'll take a totally random number. Let's say it has 73 electrons, right? It can do this process 73 times, then it's knackered, right? It can't carry on. So luckily there is another process which is happening and you can see that this is happening in my thylakoid space. Okay, and I wouldn't get too bogged down about where this is happening, but if you can remember, so it can be a good thing. In my thylakoid space, there is a process called photolysis happening. If you want to remember it, I've told my students before to remember this as photolysis, right? Lysis meaning the splitting, photo meaning using light. So photolysis means splitting something using light. Okay, um, this is of water. So water is uh, photolysized. I don't know if that's the word, but water is um, undergoes photolysis, right? So H2O, as you can see here, H2O turns into half of an oxygen. So because it's H2O, it's only got one oxygen. So it forms half of an oxygen molecule. It will form uh, two of these little H pluses, these little protons and it also forms some more electrons. Okay, so it forms some electrons as well. You can balance that differently, and I'll show you how to balance that differently in a second. But photolysis um, basically splits some water apart, and these little electrons, these can feed back into my chlorophyll to replace it, to replace the electrons of Australia. So that can keep this going. Okay, so photolysis is really, really important as it allows for my... Um, Totally lost my train of thought. It allows for my chlorophyll to keep it up, to keep it going, to never stop, to never surrender, whatever else you want to say, right? Um, the electrons are basically being produced to allow chlorophyll to carry on going. Okay, as if this wasn't complicated enough, there is like one last thing that happens, and this bit's actually easy. And if you've done respiration, this bit happens um, in respiration too. The person who just said, Zara, uh, Zara, sorry, you've just said you love water. People get really confused by this. And I've always asked my classes in A-level, why do plants need water? And, they, and why do we need water and stuff like that? And they tend to get bogged down by talking about cells expanding with water. But this is why we need water. Water is there to provide electrons for chlorophyll. All right, if you're a plant, that's what you're doing. The last thing that happens, I told you that all of these hydrogen ions get pumped into uh, the thylakoid space or into the lumen or into the inner membrane space. All of these hydrogen molecules have wound up somewhere over here, okay? I made a few more of them, didn't I, just now uh, when I photo uh, photolyzed my uh, water, right? So I've got a whole load of hydrogen ions over here. What happens, what happens when you've got loads of hydrogens in one place and I almost swore, almost none of them over here? What's gonna happen if you've got loads here and none of them here, what's gonna happen? Uh, let's have a look. Someone has just said chemiosmosis, so that person, Molly Brown, you are correct. Um, concentration gradient is created. Perfect. Diffusion, lovely. That's what I'm looking at. Concentration gradient, down, con lovely. Guys, smashing it. So I've got a high concentration over here. I've got a low concentration over here. Hydrogen is going to go down this protein here. So hydrogen is going to go down this protein here called ATP synthase. And when it goes through it, this is one of the most Oh, I'm going to sound so lame. This is one of the most incredible proteins ever, right? It's got a little motor on it, which spins around as it goes. As hydrogen moves through it, ATP is synthesized. So uh, a condensation reaction is happening between um, adenosine diphosphate and an inorganic phosphate to make ATP. Okay, so every time a hydrogen molecule moves through here, ATP is made, right? Remember I said, the stroma is a place to be. This ATP can go off and it can go and do its own thing. Um, the hydrogen, these little hydrogen guys over here, they can join up with another thing. So there is another molecule, which I mentioned earlier, NADP. Don't know why I wrote it there. That's basically it really in the way. But this hydrogen will join NADP and it will form this reduced NADPH. Okay. Those two things can then get used elsewhere. Okay, so what are we saying? 
Uh, what's a stalked part particle? Basically, this little protein, if you see it, it's got a little bobbly bit on the end. I Yeah, if, you've probably got another tab open right now. If you Google ATP synthase, you'll see it's got this weird little structure that looks something like that. It's got a little stalk to it, okay? Um, right, I'm going to go through this step by step now, and then we'll probably finish up because that's pretty much all the stuff you really need to know about this. Okay, and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. Hopefully it's already making some sense. But these two are the big boys that we're making. These are the big things that I'm trying to get as much as as much as as possible of. Oh, one other thing, I did say I briefly mention cyclic phosphorylation. The issue with cyclic phosphorylation is these electrons. Basically, they never move down the electron transport chain. They just stay in the same photosystem. So all of these electrons um, basically stay in the same place and it makes a little bit of ATP, but it doesn't make NADPH, okay? That's a problem for the person who asks. NADPH isn't made and that's really useful. Okay, so, <laughs> Hattie, NADPH is used to make sugars using CO2 in the carbon cycle. Yeah, it is, but um, Right, so, ATP is synthesized by phosphorylating ADP in the enzyme. So guys, I think you can break photosynthesis down into making a few little bits. So I would say, if you're gonna talk about this, you want to be able to tell me that ATP is synthesized, sorry, is powered by the movement of what? What is ATP powered by? How do we make our ATP? Who can tell me? It's weird, it's like I'm waiting to listen to someone say something, but really bizarrely, it's all online. Um, protein, no, it is not protein. What is ATP powered by? Lovely, hydrogen ions. Okay, so H plus is a thing which is powering my ATP, okay? It is powered by a hydrogen ion um, concentration gradient. And just so you know, this movement of lots of hydrogens down the ATP synthase is sometimes given another name, which is chemiosmosis. Okay. Don't worry too much about what that actually means. Uh, it's just one of those things you need to learn by rote. Chemiosmosis is just this movement of hydrogens, ions, down the ATP synthase. So does the hydrogen ions move via? Yes, hydrogen moves via a concentration gradient. Okay, why does only H plus go through the ATP synthase? Uh, the way these proteins work is they're either really narrow, really wide, uh, they'll be charged in certain places, so only certain things can go through, right? Um, it's only if you're small enough you can actually get through, and hydrogen is the smallest ion that really exists. Crystal clear, super. Um, the concentration gradient of protons is created by what? So why did we have this massive amount of hydrogen ions forming somewhere up here? What's the reason? Photolysis of water provides hydrogen ions that build up. Yes, photolysis of water is doing that. So that is one reason why we have some hydrogen ions. What was the other reason? What was the other reason that we had hydrogen ions up there? Can anyone tell me? Actively transported, yes, protopod, lovely. So let's talk about those then. So there are, um, we'll talk about photolysis of water. Photolysis of water is one bit. And then we also have um, hydrogen pumps or hydrogen ion pumps. I'm being really pedantic with this because I've seen kids, I say kids, I've seen A-level students have marks taken off of them because they said hydrogen as opposed to hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are pumped to the, uh, let's say, lumen for the person who used the word lumen earlier. Um, cool. Okay, so lovely. That is all ATP synthesis is. ATP synthesis is hydrogen moving through an ATP synthase molecule. That allows for ADP um, and an inorganic phosphate to basically undergo condensation, forming ATP. Okay, that's it. That's all ATP synthesis is. Okay. Um, photoionization, in terms of remembering what photoionization is, um, the electrons, where did our electrons originally come from that were ionized? What were the things that actually allowed my electrons to be made in the first place? Can anyone tell me? Water, no, the electrons weren't coming from water. There are some electrons coming there as well. To be fair, I should really have a little electron drawn there. 
Uh, lovely, chlorophyll. So photoionization, the majority of these electrons are coming from chlorophyll. They are replaced, however, by my um, molecule of uh, water. So they're being replaced by water. So these electrons are coming from chlorophyll. Okay. In terms of sort of defining what photoionization is, I think we need to basically say um, it is when a light photon or a photon of light, a photon of light, um, let's say collides, it's a good scientific word, collides with chlorophyll causing the excitation, that's an actual word, by the way. When I'm saying excited electrons, that's a proper way of saying it. It's like when someone says, uh, what is your mass? The actual term they mean is, how massive are you? Um, so the light photon collides with chlorophyll, causing the excitation of electrons. Okay, cool. Um, that is what photoionization is. Light energy exciting electrons, bam, yes. Photon, is that a beam of electrons? Yeah, a photon is, uh, sorry, not a beam of electrons. A photon is, it's really hard to think about this. It's one little bit of light. So I've got two lights shining on me up here at the moment, which is why my forehead's lovely and shiny, I've just noticed. Um, the little, the lights that I've got over here, they are literally firing little particles at me called photons. And that is why I'm lighting up. That's why you can see me. Okay. Um, who else is confused with that? Yeah. So a photon is just a little bit of, um, <laughs> I just saw someone flirting over this. Fick, what's your snap? If you two could hold your flirting for just two minutes, that'd be ideal. Um, photons are just little bits of electrons. Okay. Right. So I think I've only got a couple more things to talk about. Right, go on. Um, two more things I want to mention and then I will be done, okay? So in terms of photoionization, electrons become excited. They sort of move, um, they move down the electron transport chain. That releases energy, so hydrogen ions can move. Hydrogen forms its massive gradient, moves down an ATP synthase, forming ATP. Um, those hydrogen ions then bind with NADP. Um, which becomes reduced, and then that can go off and do its thing. Okay, photoionization was something I mentioned a second ago that I was going to tell you another equation for photolysis. So in case you want to see this another way, if I have H2O and H2O forms uh, H plus plus O2 plus electrons, how could I balance this so that I don't have to stick a stupid half in here? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me a way <laughs> of making this balance? 2H2O, right. If I put a 2H2O there, lovely. I now have two oxygens, which is good. How many hydrogen ions am I making? Waiting for someone, lovely. Oh, no, that person said something I wasn't after. So if I've got two H2Os, how many uh, protons can I make? Lovely, four, I can make four of these, look. So one, two, three, four. If I've got four protons, that must mean I've got four electrons. These two will always be the same. Okay, so photolysis, that's the other equation. You can remember either if you like. This is the thing which is providing chlorophyll with all of the electrons, okay? So photolysis is providing chlorophyll with electrons, it is replacing them. Okay, whew. Ooh, I reckon that needs a few minutes to just like consider how we are feeling. Okay, so if you would like to have a little rating of how you are feeling, I think that would be really, really useful. If you could just tell me how this is making you feel. That went quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lots of twos. Madness. Someone's happy. So... I think two is probably a sensible thing to say. I feel like this is a really, really hard thing. Who said when do these live sessions start? Do you not realize I am sat right here doing this live right now? Because I am. Like, I don't know how I can prove that. I could show you a, hang on, look, just to prove my point that uh, there is a current time, if you can see that. See, this is live. Don't, don't doubt that this is live. Um, 
Good. Right. Lots of twos. Where was I? Totally got distracted. Um, that's a good thing. Two is probably where you want to be. I think if you're saying that you're a one, you might be getting ahead of yourself because this is properly, properly tricky. OK, so if you were a two, that's probably where I'd expect you to be. OK, um, what I would recommend and I was going to go through some exam questions, but I think I might actually skip that and just answer some questions instead um, in a second is just keep going over this, keep looking over it, keep making notes. What I did when I learned this is I used to draw these really horrible diagrams. Hang on, I'll show you the kind of thing that I mean. I draw a horrible diagram. Uh, there is a nice membrane that I've drawn. Here is one of my photo systems. There you go, there's a photo system. I draw my electron transport chain. I really can't say that. And then, Ooh, there is my ATP synthase. I would draw things like this, literally, ooh, there you go, literally so many times and draw all of the things that happen until you're absolutely fluent with it that you can talk about it at, at length, right? The best way of learning this is basically by doing it enough times and then trying to teach someone, okay? So I'm going to skip over some... Um, oh, if someone's asked for an exam question. The only exam question I've got um, on this is a question which isn't totally related to it. So, no, I'm not going to show you it. Um, the exam question, hang on, if I put it there, I put it there, and then you can have a look at it. You can pause the video, I guess, in a sec, and you can have a go at doing it. And in terms of the answers, or oh, if I very quickly write an answer in, that could be an interesting way. So if you don't want to know the answer to this question, uh, close your eyes for a couple of seconds. So. This one, explain why science measure the rate of production of oxygen, oxygen in this investigation. That's because uh, oxygen, hang on, try not to listen if you're going to do this exam question, is produced in the light dependent stage. And then the answer to this question, um, I'm going to write the maths in, but not talk over it. So you need to get an answer that looks like this. So you need to do that to work out that this is 140. And then just to give you a clue, that says 15 minutes. Um, this says an hour, right? You do 140 divided by four, which gives you an answer of 35 uh, micromole per milligram. I'll leave it there. Don't worry too much about it. Um, again, with this NADP synthesis, we needed to talk about this very, very briefly, but I don't want to spend too long doing it. Ooh, hopefully you guys can still see me. I'm just gonna check that I haven't just disappeared because I'm slightly conscious that I have. Um, in terms of NADP synthesis, the only stuff that you guys really needed to know about this um, was that your, your protons are coming from your uh, pumps. Your electrons are coming from uh, photolysis. In fact, I probably do need to spend a couple of seconds on this. Um, photolysis and the electron transport chain. One other little point, which I haven't actually mentioned, which I sort of forgot to say, is when you make your NADP, and I'm gonna say H at the end, so you remember it's reduced. When you make this, um, it's not just hydrogen that you need. So to make it, I need to have a reaction where I've got NADP plus hydrogen ions. And then you also need to have electrons as well, right? And that's why this is reduced. That's why hydrogen is added to it, because it's got hydrogen and electrons. And then the two of them combined makes hydrogen, okay? So down in this bit here, my little hydrogen molecule, that's going to join with NADP and the electrons will join with it too, which is basically what makes my NADPH. Um, excellent, right, hopefully you guys are feeling okay with that. I'm gonna skip this, right? The last thing I'm gonna say then, is, or the last few bits, is hopefully by now you should know the basics of photosynthesis and pigments. Okay, you should know how ATP is produced, so with my ATP synthase. And you should know that NADPH, reduced NADP, is made by combining hydrogen and electrons with this chemiosmosis theory. Okay, um, just talk you through a few little things just about some advice. So if you're enjoying this, uh, if you're finding that these sessions are helping, which uh, from your comments, right, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like lots of you, this is hopefully being really useful for. Um, Snap Revise 2.0 is coming really, really soon. 
Uh, it's coming on the 16th of October. It doesn't actually exist yet. Like the only sessions, um, like the web sessions that we've been doing recently, uh, are the ones that you've seen. Okay, but we're going to have one for every single session of all of A-level biology and chemistry. Okay, just so you can have a look at this. Oh, my ink stuff might disappear, and you'll have to let me know if I disappear as well. Uh, let's have a look. Am I still on YouTube, or have I somehow gone to just a picture of my face? I'm hoping not. Um, let's have a look. Yes, lovely. You can see what I can see. Guys, look, this is what we're offering you. So in terms of Snap Revise 2.0, we have a system where you can pick whatever subject you want to be doing. Look, this person is looking at the lungs. They then get to do a test. I know you don't want to do a test, but it is useful. They get to do a test and it tells you what you don't know. Okay, following that, we've got some really smart technology, some really clever stuff, um, which basically will get you to watch some videos on the bits you don't know. Look, here it is. It will load up videos straight for you for you to start watching to improve your knowledge. Um, following on from that, there are literally, literally thousands of self-marking quizzes. So you can do some quizzes to your heart's content. Uh, you can look at our lovely posters, which you can stick up around your room to learn this stuff. So there's one on photosynthesis, which has all of this stuff I've been talking about without me talking possibly nonsense. Um, there's some walkthrough exam questions for you to look at. Uh, there are some other bits as well. There are even more questions, easy, medium, hard. Uh, you get points. And if you go for the best service that we are offering, um, you basically have tutors who can answer questions for you. Okay, You get the web classes, which I've been doing today. So this thing that you've got right now, this won't be free forever, unfortunately. I wish it was, but we also do need to actually make a profit. So if you want this, if you want to continue this, that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to sign up. Um, because if you saw my last session, hang on, I'll load this up for you. If you saw my last session, loads of people were asking me lots of questions and my moderators were getting back to you. Um, basically, there's some different packages. So if any of you, I saw someone earlier had already bought Snap Provise. Excellent. Um, those people who've already bought it will end up getting this really basic package, right? So they get the, all the teaching videos and there are loads and they cover the majority of the course, right? They get some exam free videos, but it's not this kind of video. Um, and they get the mini revision guides. So they get all those things. If you've signed up, you'll get this. Um, if you have signed up as well, you also get a discount from the pro and the ultimate. If you want what I've been talking about today, um, the web classes, the drop-in tutor and the tutor support uh, chat, and you'll probably have quite a few of these sessions every week, um, then that's the ultimate package. In terms of a pro package, the one sort of in between, you don't get the web classes, you don't get to enjoy me talking at you for an hour of your evening, um, but you do get a few more things. You do get the quizzes, which is really, really, really useful um, because I found there wasn't a whole lot of A-level stuff for me when I was revising. Um, you do get the smart technology and you do get some exam packs, okay? Um, just so you know as well, so I don't know if you've noticed this, oh, keeps coming up with the same thing. I don't know if you notice this. If you go on YouTube, look, this is our, um, our sort of area. This is our page, right? If you have a look, um, here are the live streams that are going on. So here's one which I'm doing literally right this second. Uh, the one that is currently, well, it, doesn't, it does say live for this. Kind of is right now, or it is. Um, if you have a look, there's a little reminder button. So if you want to remind yourself if this is coming on, so there's one tomorrow, feel free to click on this reminder, right? There are loads of these coming up. Look, here they are. So photosynthesis, there's my next photosynthesis one, which I'm going to go through. Um, if you're in year 12, look, here's my lipids one, which I'm going to do next for year 12. Okay, so there are loads of things that you need to be, uh, well, you don't need to be, that I would recommend that you have a look at for now. Okay, and then just to finish off, before I answer a few of your questions, I said there was a discount code. If any of you want that discount code, there it is. You have access for two years, but this will go, this will die tonight. Okay, if you don't try to get our offer now, it will die. And remember, I did say if you were to post something on Instagram um, at Snap Provise, you may be chosen to get a special discount. Okay, so I'll leave that there. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, ask them now and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. Uh, maybe, hopefully, you guys will be able to come back to this. Uh, I wouldn't say take a screenshot of this code right now. You can literally come back to it on YouTube. If I go back to this page here, feel free to ask me any questions, and I'll try my best to answer them. Oh, 
What advice would you give to learn mark schemes and sometimes one mark scheme might allow a phrase word and another doesn't? Um, Basma, the issue is, is some of them, as you say, will allow certain things and some of them won't. You've got to do so many that you get used to the things that they do allow and don't allow. And you've basically got to become conservative with how you answer questions. So for instance, if a question will allow you to say hydrogen ions three times out of four, you've got to learn that. If um, you see that an exam board will, if you're talking about this process and it says um, like you get marked the same word oxidation three times out of four, but the other time you don't have to, then you've just got to learn that. Okay, so you've got to look at enough exam questions so you can pick up the things that they are saying more often and just go with that. And I think the only way you can do it is by doing pretty much all of them. So when I did my A-levels, I'd done every single exam question that existed which is terrifying, but I think it's the best way of doing it. Um, oh, does someone want a free account? That's cool. Um, yeah, lovely, Maisie Palmer, smashed it, well done. You've apparently got this for free for the next amount of time. Um, will I be doing a live stream on electron orbitals? As a biologist, uh, no, I'm not gonna do one on electric orbitals. I am certain that my colleague Georgia will be doing one on electric orbitals at some point. And you never know, she might be listening right now and she might want to be doing that uh sooner or later i don't know uh anyone else <laughs> thick ham are you are you flirting again because it looks like it guys i'll give you a couple of minutes to ask me some questions if not don't worry thick ham i know your game i know that you're trying to get in there any opportunity and i i respect that but if you have a question go for it otherwise i'm gonna leave you to your flirting with whoever How do you tackle graph questions? Okay, I do happen to have a graph question gone. I did have this question, didn't I? So I think the key to tackle graph questions is, well, firstly, I don't know why I look over there. I'm just looking right at your soul now. Hello. Um, you need to read all this stuff, right? This stuff is really, really key. And I would probably read it more than once. So looking at this question, uh, chloroplasts contain chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B. Scientists found tobacco plants for mutation. Okay, that's really quite important. Um, to make more chlorophyll B than normal. They investigated this effect on the rate of photosynthesis. I would stop at this point and then recap what it's talking about. So I think it's about a plant with mutation had more chlorophyll than the other one and they measured its rate of photosynthesis. Right, we've got that. Um, the scientists carried out the following investigation. They grew normal and mutant tobacco plants. They grew some of each in low light and others in high light. They isolated samples of chloroplasts, interesting, and they measured the oxygen production they had isolated from plants. Okay, so they took two different types. They, um, I've already forgotten. They took two different uh, types, one in high light, one in low light, took some chloroplasts from them and measured oxygen production. Okay, so I would stop at this point and then recap what these scientists are doing. So they're trying to work out um, how much oxygen is being made by a mutant and a non-mutant, and then measuring the amount of oxygen. Bear with me, I'm just going to have a drink. That's water, not vodka. Um, following that, I would look at the units that they're giving me. So they are measuring oxygen produced in micromoles per milligram per hour. So that's the amount of oxygen in micromoles per milligram of whatever, so water, per hour, right? and they are looking at the light intensity being made. So I'd have a look at the graph and think, right, um, here's my mutant, oh look, it's making loads of oxygen um, per whatever, and as the light intensity increases, the amount increases, that's what I'd expect. Look at that one, oh, it's in the same, that was in the same, that was in the same. Right, so the question here then, um, they collected oxygen for 15 minutes. Calculate the difference in oxygen produced by chloroplasts from the mutant plants grown in low and high light intensities, a light intensity of 500 micromole photon meters per second. Right, so next step, I would work out how big just one of these squares is, okay? So both ways, so here I've got a gap of one, two, three, four, five, I think my pen's not very good at this, one, two, three, four, five, good. So five boxes equals uh, 50, so I can work out that one box equals 10. So I know that um, they're talking about 
500 uh, micromoles. So they're looking at this column here. And I can see that this one is dead on the line. So that one's 200. And this one, which is also a mutant, is how many above is that? Looks like it's one above. So I know it's 10. So 50 plus 10 equals uh, 60. Right, I don't know why I've written an equals there. I didn't really need to. Because it's asking for the difference, differences are easy. 200 minus 60 equals 140. And then they've said in each travel sign to collect this option for 15 minutes. I know over here that it mentioned an hour. This is where the units are really, really, really important. And to turn one hour into 15 minutes, I need to divide it by four. So divide it by four. 70 is easy to, sorry, 140 divided by two is 70. Divided by two equals 35, All right? That's how I do it. I think you just got to go through it slowly. I don't know why I decided to actually go through that properly. But I think the, the key way to do these graphy questions is just take your time. Make sure you know what they're talking about. Spend time working out what the graph is showing you. And then be careful of things like where it says 15 minutes. Who, I can't remember who that was, who asked me that, but hopefully that's helped a little bit. Um, God, I've got loads of questions now. Let's have a look at some of them. Um, <laughs> oh, see you next week, uh, Olga. Um, where did the H pump come from? So the hydrogen pump, you're talking about this guy here, right? Um, that one's I've doodled all over. This is a hydrogen pump. These hydrogen pumps are just intrinsically embedded in the membrane. They're always there. Okay, they just need a bit of energy from electrons. Um, what package is a discount for? I think the discount is for uh, not Snap Provise 2, but Snap Provise 1. However, I'm pretty sure this is still being finalized by my team at headquarters, so I'll let them get back to you. Uh, can the term electrochemical gradient be used interchangeably with concentration gradient? Um, yes. So, Mohammed, there are more than one way of describing this. So I've seen this referred to as a um, electrochemical gradient, a concentration gradient, a proton gradient, and a proton motive gradient, and chemiosmosis. If you are in doubt of which one to say, I genuinely, when I did this, just used all of them. So I remember in an exam, because I think I had a question about how um, NADPH is produced. I just said hydrogen will move down an ATP um, synthase protein down an electrochemical slash proton motive slash proton slash concentration gradient, um, causing ADP to undergo a reaction with inorganic phosphate, causing it to uh, have a um, condensation reaction from an ATP. I think I was just nerdy enough to say absolutely everything to prove to my examiner I knew what I was talking about. Um, right, I reckon that's probably a good time to finish then. I've gone on longer than I thought I would. Um, hopefully this has been something which has been really, really useful to you. Um, I'm going to finish there. So hopefully guys, I'll see you next week. So my next session will be on um, Monday. I think, possibly Tuesday. Let's have a look, I've got it right here. Hey. Um, it will be on the 23rd of September, 2019. Okay, the 23rd is apparently Monday, lovely. So I'll see you then in the lipid session if you're in year 12, if you wanted to do something just to revise, be there. Uh, otherwise I'll see you on Wednesday if you are just doing the photosynthesis. Okay, thanks guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening, hopefully it's been helpful. Um, if you do have any more questions, Ask oh, your teacher, I guess. See you later, guys.